Hello, and let's get back to actually doing some work today. So let's see what I've got. Looks like basically uh, we need to, first and foremost, we need to fix the nightly build. We had some issues with uh, cooked data. So we'll be fixing those. So let's get started. We're just going to compile our editor and then we're going to go fix some of that. It's some cooked data that um, is referencing a function I removed. So I don't usually cook the data on my machine. I got the build system for that. So. Just one of those things. And after we get started with fixing some stuff, uh, we need to work on multiple cameras. So the idea is we've got kind of a 2D game, and then we want maybe 3D foreground and background. So we're going to figure out exactly how we can do that. We got started yesterday with using render targets in order to actually get that to work properly. Basically a render target that we would render to a 2D plane which we would then combine with the rest of the scene. And in this case we would be combining kind of a this foreground, then the scene, then the background right behind it. So we'd need two well, hopefully we can do it with like one render target. But if we have to, we'll see. Like, because what I want to do is I want to basically have that render target also render the Z information for that, for the scene. And um, that way the foreground will just draw in front of everything, even though we're actually rendering the texture behind it. But I'm not sure if that's going to work. Because, well, I'm not exactly sure. So I need to check my build log from last night to see exactly what's what asset was messed up for the cook. So in real works is you have assets and then you cook those assets, and the cooked versions of the assets are what you like. That's what ends up on people's machines. So it's the example blueprint component is what it looks like. I'll throw this over here. So it's this could not find function named static role in example blueprint component. So we just need to go to that component and uh, go ahead and fix it. So let's see if we can, if we can find it. So it's going to be this guy. And yeah, we've got this compile error happening. Let's see, where exactly is it? There it is. Yeah, so you can just click on this errors and all these errors will take it right over there. Yeah, so I had this like, this is how you can do like a weighted die entry thing. Um, so let's see, is there static? There is static role, but it's on a different method now. All right, I moved it around. So that's all we need to do. Was Perforce not online yet? Uh, 
Okay, there it goes. Alright, so we're able to compile it. And we're good to go. So, let's go ahead and check that in. And we'll kick off our kick off our build and later we'll we'll go check on that. So eng. Fixing the build. Um, missing static roll method. So nothing nothing too crazy. Let me just go back to the Jenkins and we just build build that thing all over again. So just a little bit of housekeeping to start off start off with today. All right. So what's next on the list? We're gonna work on multiple cameras. So. Let's go through this real quick. What I was working on yesterday is getting multiple cameras into the scene, and Unreal does not support this, as far as I have seen. So, basically, what we did was we created this um, scene capture actor, and we threw a scene capture test object on it, and we're able to do stuff with that, but. Basically, we're rendering to this render target, which is 1024 by 1024. And what we want to do is we want to be able to change this render target at a runtime. So let's see if we can even do that. So we need to actually have a render target texture that we create and assign to, basically we're assigning this to a material. Yeah, and we have a pixel depth offset. Hmm. I'm gonna have to learn a lot more about the material stuff is what it's looking like. Because I really don't know anything about it. So let's see, resize texture at runtime Unreal 4. And of course the first thing pops up Unity. <laughs> Alright, Unity uses forward rendering whereas Unreal uses deferred and deferred rendering you're not going to pass everything you want to the scene. The benefits of this method is blah blah blah. All right, so I'm basically just reading some some forum posts on Unreal. So, so good morning, Zdox. It is six in the afternoon over where I am. So yeah, it's morning for me. We're working on multiple cameras right now. We're trying to figure out kind of the when we're rendering to a material. 
to have multiple cameras. We're basically rendering to a 2D plane here. And in order to do that, you have a render target, which you render to using a scene capture camera. And then you apply that to a material on your plane, and then you can see through the camera. And then you can look at that 2D plane through your actual camera. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out how to change the size of this render target at runtime and exactly what that's going to mean. So I'm just, I'm looking it up online because I don't really know what the hell I'm doing. So it looks like we should be able to grab the capture component, grab the texture target, and call init auto format on it and update the resource. So we're going to do that basically whenever the, the user changes the screen resolution for the, the output window, we're going to need to rebuild this render target. So let's see if we can actually go do that. So we need to get the scene capture component. Let's close everything to start with. I think this is on the player proxy. So the player proxy actor. So I think it's this setup camera. Yeah, on screen res changed is going to call setup camera field of view. And right now that's being used to set the orthographic width of the actual thing. And right now we've got kind of a hack to grab the, the scene capture thing. I'm going to keep that just for now. Um, we're gonna we're gonna actually snag a, a better thing. So we're actually going to make a function here called a player proxy actor uh, resize render targets. And when you resize them to the screen resolution. So we've got this graphics utils get window size that'll give us the size of our actual window I've created this graphics utils thing to give us the actual correct size sometimes it can be pretty confusing exactly what everything means in the graphics layer um, you have to be very specific about your terminology when you're dealing with it so I don't like to be specific with my terminology, I just kind of like making my own little universe and playing inside of it. Alright, so we'll save that. So we should be able to, for every actor, Actor and scene captures. We need to grab the scene capture component. So it's like actor. Is there like a get component on a actor? So let's see, like get component by class. Okay component by class and we're going to want the is it scene scene capture component that h is that a thing yeah so it should be c capture component and it's like static static class or whatever the hell yeah static class and this should get get component by class gives you a U actor component. I guess we have to. 
Next, I have to cast it, I'm guessing. Just looking up the syntax, I have not gotten familiar with Unreal 4 to just know absolutely every piece of the syntax yet. Right. So if we don't have one, then we're good. So capture component was render target. Was it? It was texture target. Now, where is the frickin' texture? Capture on camera's movements, disable if you're in capture manually, max view distance override, show flags. We might need to actually use the engine show flags. see a texture target here anywhere so I'm wondering exactly where it is well let's take another look at the scene capture and see what See what they called that texture, and we should be able to find it based on that. Yeah, so we're not trying to make a bunch of tutorial videos on how to use Unreal 4 or how to write C++, but if you got any questions about development or whatever, go ahead and fire and I'll see if I can answer them. But otherwise, you know, we're learning Unreal 4 for this game. So, I'm not going to be like, oh, well, we just need to get our render target texture from over here and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. So, if there's something I'm doing that's really dumb, make sure to tell me. That way I can know that I'm doing something stupid. And then I can maybe fix that. I just don't see any textures inside of scene capture component itself. But these show flags we might need to use later. Because probably what we can do is set everything in the foreground. Well, in the middle ground to a specific uh, type of object or whatever for capturing in the show flags. And then we render the scenes. We can probably render the cameras from both the exact same positions. One perspective, one orthographic. And then we, then we can composite the scene nicely. And I do like the view distance override. 
because we might be able to set that real close and if we can't get those render things working out uh, like we want. So inside of our scene capture test, it's a capture component 2D, so scene capture component 2D is the actual thing, which is a scene capture. A scene capture is an actor. We have this U scene capture component 2D. So we want to look that up real quick. Because it's got scene capture here and then texture target. So I'm wondering where the hell, like, this has to be somewhere with scene capture. And it's got to be called this, like, somewhere. Fine, all right, where's just texture target? What class? Where do you exist? So it is literally the U scene capture component 2D. Alright, so it's the U scene capture component 2D is what we want. Which is what we need. Let's see, in the U in the actor, do we have like get child? Yeah, we need to actually, because in our scene here, at least at the moment, this camera is actually got a child actor component, which is scene capture. So it's got the mesh component and then the capture component 2D. So all right, maybe maybe we just need to to grab the capture component 2D off of it. But let's do both real quick. A T array of A actors. So let's do uh, for every child and actors. Let's grab that scene capture component. So for null pointer, we're just gonna continue. Otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna want to set capture component 2D. Let's see, render is it texture target? Yeah. So we're gonna check if the texture target is null.
And after we do that, we're going to do capture components to the texture target. And let's see what they were calling. They were saying that we should call init auto format and give it a size X and a size Y, which we've got from window.x uh, and window.y and update resource immediate. Updates the render target texture immediately. Clear render target should be true optionally clears. So I'm just gonna print out a little log here and say if a log we are setting a capture component 2D render target to uh, percent %f by percent %out. And that should be, actually these are integers, so percent %d. Window.x, window.y. Actually, no, they are actually floats. And let's just Print some other things out. Info log. Couldn't find capture component on child actor. Couldn't find texture target for child actor. And I think it's the child actor. Um, We're just gonna say down percent the child actors, and we're just gonna do actors dot num. Anyway, so let's see if that actually works. So we're finding our stuff by tag. And then we're going to mess with stuff, and we'll probably be changing all that. You know, once I actually get a proof of concept of this thing working, we're going to then scrap all this code, refactor it all into something that is easy to mess with. But before we can make it simple and easier to use, we've got to figure out what the hell it is we're actually doing. At least that's the plan, right? Got a plan. Window size is zero, so something to know. So window size now, window size is zero still. So now this thing's actually open when we hit play. Let's see. The window size is zero still. Is that true? Doesn't seem right. Our window size is now 1785 by 1000. Right, so we'll get all of our child actors. We have one child actor, which is this scene capture test gen variable scene capture test C cat. We'll grab our capture component, which we couldn't find the capture component on the shell actor. So what is this actor? Scene capture actor. Do we have like a components array? Yeah, so just like we weren't able to snag anything. Couldn't find capture components on Child Actor. Alright, well, maybe it's. You know, let's. Oh, 
Well, we weren't actually going on the child. We were going on the parent, so... We need to go on those children. Child actors. They've got... They've got the capture components. Yeah, let's just actually put in a null, null check there, just in case. Our window size x and y are zero, then obviously that's just garbage data, and we're not, we're not gonna resize our other targets for that. Because really what we should be doing is this player proxy actor should have like a blueprint component to it. A blueprint portion of its logic which we we actually control all this stuff from nicely. Yeah, we, we can like change stuff without compiling every five seconds. Our capture component is all right. We actually were able to set our capture component texture target size. All right, good. Now let's see if we can resize it at runtime. Looks great, all right. And if anybody's looking at it, it looks kind of like this. Uh, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna... Oh, did, did frickin... Has Adam got this checked out? This is my damn level. If Adam's got this checked out, I'm gonna be upset. Because he shouldn't be messing with my level. And yeah, of course he was messing with my level. Well, sorry Adam, but you're gonna get an email about this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this level for Adam. I'm going to call this uh, Camera Test Adam. And 
and then Unreal's gonna freeze them. See if it's actually frozen or if it's doing something. No, it's doing something. It's just having a little bit of trouble. Alright. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I go ahead and check in that. So I can move that one to another change list. I'm gonna tell Adam, use your own damn test level, please leave mine alone. Adam test level copy. Alright, angry email sent, and uh, we'll switch back to our camera test. No, <laughs> he just started watching. Alright, not too bad. What's up, Adam? I was just I was just bitching about you. So good time. I need to take out all your all your things real quick. I duplicated the level, so you, you are, your stuff should be I think working, but I need to keep this level I need to like destroy it so I don't wanna well, you're, you're adding stuff to my test level, and um, if I don't know what's in the level, sometimes like weird crap can happen, and I don't know what's going on. And also, I don't want to blow away your test stuff. And if you ha if you're working on this at the same time as me, like Perforce should be really unhappy and not let us do it. So, so I duplicated it, and I hope I didn't mess your stuff up. Looks like you got some light map stuff built. So, you might have to rebuild it. Let's see, what we're working on right now is resizing our... Why is this just... Ah, this thing's being annoying. Yeah, you never know. The rock might crash me. Destroy the universe. Stupid rocks. They're always doing that. Uh, basically, we're making sure to resize our render targets to the size of the screen so that they're always perfect in what they look like. So we don't have any weird fuzzy stuff for no real reason. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the render target object itself to actually be like one pixel or... Yeah, one pixel by one pixel by default, and we'll know then if like all of our stuff is actually working or if it's just saying it's working. Because if it is working, we should be able to see what's going on. Otherwise, we're gonna see like this thing just look like a single square of crap. So just a one by one texture. So when we play this, yeah, yeah, like you can see right now in the editor, it's just a a green blob, but when we play, it's not a green blob. Alright, so our stuff's actually working. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to change this thing back to, yeah, you can see it actually changes the asset in the editor, um, which is fine. So we'll just, we'll leave this asset alone. And that should be fine. All right, so we can resize stuff. It's not hard to do. Excellent. So now what we need to do is we need to figure out how we can actually gonna try removing this like activate stuff from inside of here if I delete that right. yeah. yeah I'm just trying to remove code that doesn't do anything because so I don't need it and let's also get rid of the fat sacks that we don't need as well we want to have probably as few things messing around with our scene as we can. And I kind of also want to remove pretty much most of these shrubs and everything. Just so we don't have to deal with much. Also, like, you're, you're usually not on at this time, Adam. I'm surprised. You must not be completely swamped, swamped with work today or something. What a concept. I don't even know you anymore. So we're just going to make a couple of test assets that should just help us Help us make sure our camera is working properly, but not complicate our scene with a whole bunch of garbage. And I need a 3D object, which I can actually put in the foreground. So. I like how weird that looks. Yeah, yeah I like to overreact. So we're gonna grab a let's just grab a cone and throw it in here. Just an innocent little cone. And what this cone is gonna do is it's gonna help us test a few things. I'm trying to rotate the damn camera. I keep screwing it up. Let's see, yeah, so we got this cone here. And we want to put it over there. So, what we want to start with is basically we want this cone to not show up. Is, is how we're gonna start because we need to figure out how to not render certain objects to our scene and this cone is one of them So let's take a look. So 
So if we're moving on, basically what we need to do is we need to figure out how to only render certain, excuse me, only certain things in a scene. So we're just going to Google that. So let's see, what is this form supposed to say? Camera A to render certain types of objects, camera B to render other types of objects. How do I do this? As far as I know, custom depth is the only way. Yes, use the custom depth for such things like creating portals. It's too bad this feature is only one of layered depth. That's 2014 though. Okay, so it might be, might be in the depth. I mean, you think it'd be pretty simple, right? A bit flag of render this or whatever the hell. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so, yeah, some of these, like, one guy's like, I did it, guys. I went and I created a shader where I set the opacity of the objects to zero. It's like, no, you're still frickin' rendering the entire goddamn scene out of that thing. You're just rendering it as transparent, so, like, we need to just not have them go into the render pass. It's a huge difference between, like, you're, you're re-rendering the whole damn scene. We don't want to do that. We want to just render the objects we want. So at the moment we can only blacklist meshes for, for stuff. So I guess the scene capture component has got some sort of stuff on it for general show flags. And we can tell it to like not include certain things. Advanced show flags. Grass, paper 2D sprites. Ooh, what is that going on there? So if we just turn that off for the scene capture test. Where are we setting this this object to? Update camera position, set ortho width. We have the cam is we're setting it plus five thousand. Let's just set this thing to our exact position. So 
So we're actually going to set our perspective camera to the position of our orthographic camera. And the thing is, if they've got these render flags in here, like with the advanced show flags, specifically excluding certain components, I should be able to, um, if not, if we can't actually exclude what we want, at least there is an example of how to exclude certain classes of objects, and we might be able to just put that into the engine itself. Because just because it's not supported doesn't mean we can't do it. That's one of the best things about Unreal 4, is you can make it do whatever the hell you want, as long as you're willing to go recompile the editor and the engine itself. So let's see what it looks like real quick. <laughs> Alright, yeah. So it's not working at all for um, not showing those render flags. Because as you can see, like the camera is basically just showing us that plane that's right in front of it. And our paper 2D sprites are being drawn. So like those, those rendering things just don't work. So paper 2D sprites, yeah, that, that doesn't work whatsoever. Well, let's see if we turn it back on, if anything shows up. Yeah, it looks exactly the same, so obviously it's all sorts of screwed up. So the other thing, so, okay, if that doesn't work, then we've got the scene capture 2D. So we have hidden actors here. So we do have hidden components and hidden actors. Show only. The only components to be rendered by the scene capture at present. Show only actors, capture every frame. Well, Show only components. It's a T weak object pointer. Hidden actors, hidden components. So, why don't we go ahead and grab an actor here and set it to only show that actor or something like that? Let's actually take a look inside of scene capture component.cpp and see what it's doing. It's not. Show only actors is not even used, is it?
Like, I mean, okay, we've got... This show only actors, but is it even used? Like, what the hell? It's inside of Scene Outliner. So let's see, this is kind of the render loop. So create scene render for scene capture it is going to take a scene, a scene capture component, render target, the size of it, max view distance, scene color, planar reflection. All right, so we're taking a look here. It's scene capture rendering. That CPP is where all the scene capture rendering happens. Post process settings. Um, so all right, we create a view family. We're gonna go through every view in the view family, grab the scene capture color, which is gonna be, I'm guessing, the bit, the blit in the back. Um, so we're adding hidden primitives to the hidden primitive array, which is really kind of messy as hell. Whoops, and um, show only primitives. So the uh, the show only actors doesn't really matter. It's going to grab all the primitive components off of those actors and show those. I guess primitive components are like the things that can actually be viewed. Yeah, even paper sprite component comes off of primitive. Um, so I think everything has to be a primitive for it to be rendered. So this is like if it's renderable and then it's creating this view show only primitives array every single frame is what it looks like. And it's calling create scene renderer and doing that and then I'll render it later. I don't see anything in here for view flags or any of this crap. Like it's just this is what we're looking for is this view and yeah, we can also set it out to be a VR game. There's our there's our left and right eye stereo passes. So it looks like pretty much our only options are to go over the actors themselves.